Sometimes a painting product exists and you don't really know what for. Ink anyone? Acrylic ink, to be specific. I need to make that quite clear as there's also alcohol-based inks that will not work the same as what I'm about to show in this video, so make sure what you've got is an acrylic. I know you've probably heard about them in the miniatures painting realm, but what for? Time for some tips and tricks about ink. One of the key things that inks do is add saturation. So I'm going to want to pick something to paint that wants that kind of saturation. And what better way to go vibrant than a lizard? The dragon lizard from One Page Rules this month will not only get my standard blue and orange scheme I've been doing on them, but I feel like I can add way more colors like reds and greens and yellows because of the fire he breathes. Plus, his little handler buddies, of course. The first way to use inks is as a wash. This one comes with a caveat though. One of the main differences between washes and inks is that inks will dry with a glass-like sheen when left to dry straight out of the bottle. And that might be fine for something like one of these little geckos if they're wanted, wet, or slimy looking. Though this can be fixed after the fact with a simple matte or max matte varnish. But what I like to do instead is actually mix in a matte medium. Not only will it make the ink a little bit thicker so it behaves more like a wash, but will dilute it out a bit, which might be important if I don't want such a dark wash. Inks can be pretty pigment dense for such a wet medium, so diluting it out will give more control over how much it darkens and covers over other colors. The process is pretty simple though, just take the ink or diluted ink and use it like any other wash, making sure it pools where it's supposed to pool. Another thing that will be different between an ink and a wash is that ink will also stain the places it doesn't pool. So overall the look of the area being washed will be darker, almost like a contrast paint, but still way more transparent to the layers underneath depending on your dilution. Which makes ink washes really good for zenithal primes. Starting with a base color that complements the ink's color and then giving it a zenithal white spray. This will give the ink something to colorize and saturate while also keeping that intense contrast and gradient provided by the zenithal highlight. You hear it all the time, blasted into your ears from across the painting table. Thin your paints. It's a mantra loved to be repeated, but nobody ever says with what. Water is the assumption, but also actually the worst option. Thinner medium is what we should be using so the paint doesn't change the way it behaves. But what if you had a thinner medium with color? Well, that's one of the things I like to use inks for. If you're starting with a dark base coat and want to thin the paint so it spreads evenly, by using an ink to thin it, there's no dilution of the pigment. You'll get a nice, thin base coat, but one still saturated with color. Mixed with paint, they don't tend to dry shiny and work exceptionally well over a light gray or white prime because ink will stain over those colors more than just a paint would. When doing the ratios, try not to go more ink than paint or the glossiness might end up coming back. If you need it more thin still, use a medium for the rest. The only caveat with this one is that it's best to use with darker colors. If you use an ink to thin a light color, you'll end up changing that brightness quite a bit as most inks use darker raw pigments. There are some exceptions for things with yellows or if you just have a lighter ink blend, like the orange for his belly. But let's say I was trying to base with a sky blue. Adding my blue ink will probably make it more of a neutral blue in the end. White ink. This is my not so low key favorite ink. White has this thing where it's actually really strong and also really not. What I mean by that is white tends to be a bit transparent to the colors under it, even for an opaque paint. But when mixing with white, a little goes a really long way. So when doing layering, I sometimes end up overdoing my first step up in brightness. White ink is the same white pigment, titanium white, just suspended more loosely in a fluid ink medium. So not only does it thin the paint when mixing, 
but also doesn't have as dense a pigment load, which means that it's better for gradual mixing of tones leading up to a white layer, but also dries much more translucent within the mix. So even though on the palette the colors might look the same, the white ink dries with more of the underlayer visible, which I find gives a much nicer blend. Even as my go-to white, there's one place I don't use it, and that's with my airbrush. I know this is going to seem a bit backwards from all the other information that's out there, but I don't find white ink good for airbrushing. Out of all the whites I've tried, it jams my airbrush the most, way more than just white paint in a thinner medium. And I don't think it's the pigment's fault at all, but the ink binder. So I don't actually do zenithals with my white ink. Though of course, your mileage may vary with any product, so don't rule it out until you try it for yourself. With all that white in the highlights, suddenly my dragon lizard isn't looking all that colorful. Continuously adding white will end up desaturating colors, but that's where a transparent and saturated pigment like an ink comes in. I'll be using my airbrush for this, so I want to make a few notes about how I use inks in an airbrush. For starters, I never go with just pure ink. Like I said before with the white, I find just pure inks clog up my airbrush way more than paint and thinner, so I do a drop of thinner or medium in with the ink as well. That'll not only make it flow better through the brush, but also reduce its glossiness. And since I like to control the amount of tint, I don't actually put that much ink in either. The medium will also help prevent spidering. When a paint comes out of the airbrush too fluid and you get a bit too close, it'll start to spray outwards in beads of water. That's known as spidering. But with a thickener, like a medium, it'll either be too thick to spread fast or just not come out as fast if you have the trigger pulled all the way back. For application, I like the airbrush because it'll allow me to get an even layer of the ink over the model and control how much of it stains the color. Were I to brush it on, in a few places it might pool more like a wash, but since the goal is to return color evenly over the model, I think the airbrush does a better job. What a layer or two of inks will do is colorize and blend everything together so the difference between the light and the dark won't be too extreme, but will also let any blending show through. The last really good place for ink, in this list at least, is for tinting metallics. When we mix paint with metallics, it can dull the shine of them as non-reflective pigments get mingled with the reflective pigments of the metallic. Inks though add far less pigment, but also stain those reflective pigments in the metallic instead of trying to fight with them, so can instead give a tint to the metallic without losing that metallic sheen. This can be a before or after process as well. If wanting to make a gold even more gold, some yellow or red can really boost its saturation, while a green or brown can give the gold a sickly look without losing any of the shine from it. Just be aware that these will dry together on the model but separate a bit in the palette, so make sure you're mixing your mix as you paint. Like with the wash and glaze, inks can be really good for staining metallics, but unlike a wash, it shouldn't dull any of the luster. And in fact, this might be one of those times you would want more of the glossiness of the ink. So it can go on straight if the layers are kept thinned with some water, or if being mixed with a medium, use a satin medium instead of a matte one to keep some of that reflectivity on the metallic flakes showing through. Just to prove my point on how well metallics and inks work together, all of the different colors of gold on this model were done with the exact same gold metallic, dwarven gold from scale 75. But I changed up the color of inks used, red, green, and brown. So inks can take a very limited palette and really allow a painter to play with color and switch things up, whether using metallics or normal paint. They give huge boosts in saturation and are just as useful on your brush as they are in the airbrush. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this one or just other fun things to do with painting miniatures. And until next time, enjoy your own painting journey.